The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. You are now tuned in to the PA Power Podcast featuring Jeff Upson and Eric Knobsnyder. PA Power Wrestling. PA Power Wrestling. Pennsylvania is wrestling. What's going on, wrestling fans? I'm Jeff Upson, joined as always by Eric Knopsnyder, and you are now tuned in to the PA Power Podcast. Unfortunately, Eric, we're starting the podcast out with some pretty grim, grim news uh, from your your sector. Yeah, very uh, tragic news last night out of Pitt Johnstown. Uh, unfortunately, uh, wrestler Nick Roberts, uh, Division Two National Champion last year, PIAA three time champ, was found dead in his apartment and. Uh, had to to report on that and really tough tough day in certainly in the Johnstown area uh so many people have been touched by Nick Roberts uh through through what he's done through wrestling through how he's inspired younger wrestlers how he's been a great teammate a great friend and obviously just a fantastic wrestler so very very trying times right now as uh as people are trying to to understand the tragic loss of a 23 year old who still had such a great life ahead of him now, from what I understand, Eric, it, they're still in the early stages of this investigation. It's, there's no cause of death or anything of that nature uh, yet. But um, I, I can't imagine how Coach Pat Bacor and, and his team is, is how they're feeling right now. Because that's just, I mean, not only was he injured and, and his career effectively ended, now, now you know, we have to deal with this. Yeah, it was, it, I mean, in the... the the timing of it is, is tragic. Everything around it is tragic. Uh, Pitt Johnstown was wrestling yesterday in the super regional and Nick couldn't be there because of a, a career ending knee injury. He's been plagued with, with knee injuries throughout the, his entire career, really starting from the time he was about 12 years old. Uh, he had a, a chronic condition and battled through that pain, wrestled through it, wrestled through breaking a wrist, breaking a hand, having plates put in there, you know, just so, so tough physically and mentally. And then, uh, you know, he, he couldn't be there yesterday with his team and, and this ends up happening. Uh, just, as I said, just a tragic situation all around. And you actually saw him last night cause he was at the, the Southwest regional. Is that correct? I did it. Uh, and, and I've known Nick, uh, going back to his freshman year of, of high school, so probably about a decade now that uh, that we go back and I've interviewed him on numerous occasions. You know, uh, consider him uh, to, to be a friend. And uh, just so happened yesterday, I turned around and and there he was. He was standing right there, stuck out his hand. Uh, to you know, we shook hands. He gave me a big grin. Said, "How you doing?" You know. And and now, unfortunately, I look back on it and I think, man, I wish I wasn't in such a hurry and I'd, I'd stop to talk to him a couple of minutes. But, you know, just the way it was, uh, everything was, was going on and I needed to, to get somewhere and get something done and, and didn't get a chance to really talk to him at all. Uh, but I have over the years, the, the last time I, I sat down with him, uh, spent about a half an hour with him after the knee injury back in November, and he was really taking it very well. I mean, he was he was really upbeat and positive. I mean, he knew his career was over, and, and he was at peace with that. He said, you know, I'm ready to, to move on. I'm going to continue to be here for my teammates going to work as, as sort of a, a de facto assistant coach and help out in any way that I can. And, you know, that'll prepare me for, for what I want to do in the future, which is coach. And so it, it was it was really, really a shock last night to, to get that news. I think all of the, the wrestling community, uh, not only in Pennsylvania, but across the, the nation is definitely uh, has him and his in their thoughts and, and prayers because it's just a tough time to, to you know, be going through uh, that. And I just... I wish his family just the best. Yes, I, I agree with you. Absolutely. Uh, thoughts and prayers to the family and, and those to, that are really close to him. Uh, his high school coach, Pat Brzezonski, uh, college coach, uh, Pat Pecora at, at Pitt Johnstown, Jody Stripmatter, who mentored him for so many years through Young Guns. Uh, just so many people that I've, I've spoken with, uh, texted, whatever, in the past 24 hours and just all stunned and, and saddened and just wondering, you know, how, how this could happen. 
So really a, a, a sad, sad time there. But Nick was, was a great ambassador for the sport. Uh, I think if you look at social media, you look at Twitter, you'll see all the young wrestlers that he impacted and, and how much of a, a, a profound impact he did have on them. Uh, I know there was a tweet from Gavin Teasdale saying that you know Nick was his hero. And you, you just look at, at Western Pennsylvania specifically, but even further out than that of, of the number of, of lives that he touched. And it's, it's really amazing. Yeah, I mean, I think it's also amazing. It speaks to just the family atmosphere that we have in, in wrestling. The wrestling community is is more than a community. It's it's a family, and it's um, you know, and that that's the one good thing about having something like that is there's a lot of support there, um, you know, for those affected by this. So, um, just just not not good news, and not the way we wanted to start out the podcast. But um, and Eric, I, I believe you are going to be going to a memorial service sometime tonight. Is that correct? Yeah, there's there's a service at Pitt Johnstown that I'm going to head up there. Uh, you know, hopefully get to, to talk to some people there. Just uh, because, as you said, it is such a tight knit community, and I don't even know work wise if anything will come out of this. But I had a, a good relationship with Nick over the years, and I know so many other people did too. And at a time like this, you just want to be around them and kind of grieve and and share your condolences. And, you know, maybe even tell some stories and, and have a couple of laughs. But, uh, you know, just to remember Nick and, and the guy that he was. Well, I, I appreciate uh, all you're doing for that, Eric. And whether it's in the in the paper or not, I appreciate you, you being there. And like you said, um, just trying to get through it. So I guess we'll, we'll try to, to, to press on here and push on and, and go through um, what, what happened over the weekend. Eric, you were at the Southwest Regional um, tournament up at IUP for the double I was out in Hershey for the South Central Regional and Triple which is District 3 self contained uh, region out there. So, um, and, and we're actually going to have Robbie Patrick, Robert Patrick, on the, uh, on the podcast, uh, Ligonier Valley. He uh, had, had a pretty solid tournament, would you say? Yeah, absolutely. He looked great. Uh, in the semifinals, he had a, a technical fall over a very good John Dale from Moshana Valley had a tech fall in a minute and 50 seconds. Didn't even make it out of the first period. Uh, that's Spencer Lee. Like, I mean, that's, in, when yeah. I, when I, I was impressed that he tech falled him period. And then you, and you said, well, he did it in the first period. I, what? How? That's great. Cause I mean, John Dale's a, a, a very good wrestler. So, um, I actually got to sit down with Austin Asano from Exeter, um, after he won his, his, uh, championship at 126 pounds in Hershey, um, and briefly got to talk with him. So we'll hear a little bit from Austin. So, uh, but first, Eric, let's just go through. And I, I want to speak about some of the things that, that stuck out to me at the South Central Regional. Um, and, and this was an interesting tournament because it was the first time they had it at the Giant Center. So historically, this has always been at the old arena, then the barn, as, they, as it's called. And um, this is the first year now that they, they moved it over to the Giant Center. So I, I heard some rumbling some, from people, and you know, a lot of people liked it. A lot of people said, well, we just missed the, the atmosphere of wrestling in the, the old arena. You know, it's such a historic site. But uh, in terms of comfortability, it was, it was definitely a little bit more uh, appeasing to have the, the Giant Center. Yeah, I can understand that, and I'd heard from people before some of the people out there who weren't so uh, so keen on moving to the Giant Center. Some of the coaches said, "Hey, we like that we have to earn a trip to the Giant Center. You know, nothing's given to you if you want to wrestle in the Giant Center. You have to get to the state tournament and and be there." And they didn't like that. Do you automatically go there now? But as you said, uh, I'm sure the the comfort level was much nicer. As much as I loved old Hershey Park Arena, uh, the, the last time I was in it, probably a decade ago it was in in pretty bad shape so i can't imagine it now yeah i mean it's i mean historic but at the same time i mean it's just not i don't think and i was an advocate for moving it um i thought just for practicality uh you know just in that sense that the it's just a little bit better um and and i actually changed it to make it a three-day tournament for triple a so it was thursday friday saturday didn't necessarily think that was I, i thought maybe we could could have done it in in two days but the hershey bears are playing so there was literally get your medals and then get the heck out of here (laughs) um you know they by the time i left uh, they were pretty much ready to drop the puck it seemed like so um 
you know, just very just different atmosphere uh, from from years past. But the wrestling was still just as good, and in fact, maybe a little bit better than it in years past. It was a lot of fun to watch uh, these these young guys and and you know seasoned veterans go at it. Um, and really, it started off at 106 in the finals. Will Bettencourt for Mannheim Central, uh, who came in number 13th in the state. He defeats Josiah Gear from Cocalco 4-2, who came in number fourth in the state. And uh, that's that's a pretty big win for Ben Court. But he also had a big win over Cole Wilson from Northeastern in the semifinal. So um, a lot of a lot of good things going on in, in, in District 3 at 106 pounds. Uh, Gear was a, a state qualifier last year, a season ago. And Ben Court, I thought he looked great. He, he wrestled tough. He you know, he, he looked composed for a freshman. He got taken down. Um, I think tw- I think both matches as semifinals and finals, he was taken down first and then came back. Um, so he he just he looked really good um, throughout, and um, I think that that goes along with that coaching with having a guy like uh, a former Penn State head coach Troy Sutherland and uh, Billy Chamberlain in his corner probably helps a little bit. Yeah, but as you said, that's still impressive composure that uh, as a freshman you're able to to go out there and battle back after giving up a takedown because sometimes you get into the postseason and even though you know there's that old saying that they're not freshmen anymore because they have a a full year full season under their belt there's still something a little different whenever you get into that postseason atmosphere especially at the giant center i'm guessing yeah i mean absolutely i would say definitely at the giant center just being in that 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 area is, is pretty big and um mentally how do you react to that um Moving up to 113 pounds, I was also really impressed with J.J. Wilson of Cedar Cliff. I don't know what he did before the finals match, but he just looked sharp. He looked aggressive. He looked hungry. Um, it, it was quite impressive to see him come out and defeat Dalton Rawball from Spring Grove, who was a, a state third-place finisher last year. Uh, he was currently ranked number three in the state. He's a junior. Um, and Wilson, the sophomore, just came out and, and really took it to him, uh, got a, a takedown, and then turned him for, for two back points which almost could have been a, a you know full three based on uh there was two two counts so um wilson looked tough and, and i think that sets him up nicely to go into the state the state tournament um because dalton rawball is no no slouch and he's like i said he took third there a year ago so this has to be good for for wilson yeah, you would think confidence-wise, uh, uh, even if he was confident before, to get a victory like that is huge. Yeah, it, and it was pretty impressive to see how he did it as well, uh, just in, in really impressive fashion. I, I was also really impressed by a freshman, Rafael Pertilla from Carlisle, who really, I mean, he flew under the radar a little bit this, this season, um, hadn't made it onto the state rankings quite yet, and he was he was second out of section three, he lost to Wilson in the finals, but he came out, lost five, four to, to uh roar ball. And in that match, he was very, very close to defeating uh, upsetting roar ball. Um, but he lost to him in, in the, the quarterfinals drops back wins three or I'm sorry, four straight matches to take third. So a guy from Carlisle, uh, Rafael Portillo is a guy you're going to want to, you're going to want to keep an eye on come, uh, in two weeks in, in Hershey. Write that name down, fans. Uh, your uh, your bracket pools, uh, you know, a little little dark horse for you there from Jeff. He, he's long and lanky, and he just re- he just is like the Energizer Bunny. He just keeps on going and going. And uh, I was very impressed at the way he just kept on going after guys, and he never really let up in, in any of his matches. He just kept the pressure on and, and kept going. So I was, I was very impressed with his performance in, in a very deep weight class at 120 pounds. Another guy who I thought turned the tables and really shined is Zurich Storm. Yes, it is one of the coolest and best names in the state, <laughs> Zurich Storm. Um, but Zurich came out, he's a now a four-time state qualifier. So he had been to states three times before, has never left with a medal. And this year he, he gets into the finals and he takes on Chris Wright from Central Dolphin, who's a junior, is a two-time state medalist. Um, and he was Chris Wright came in ranked third in the state, um, and Zurich came in as eighth. So Zurich came out and really just took it to Wright. I, I've never really seen anyone just dominate uh, Chris Wright on on their feet as much as, as Zurich did. He came out, um, got a takedown, two takedowns in the first period, was able to to get some back points in the third period to end it eight two. Um, but here's a guy who's who's just very you know you guys you might remember Merrick. He was the one who um, last year he wrestled Spencer Lee. 
and, and Spencer was upset because he touched his leg and then Spencer just, <laughs> just, you know, pinned him and sort of gave him an extra look over uh, after <laughs> he was done. But uh, very tough kid, Zerk Storm is. Uh, all right, I'm putting you on the spot. Does he medal this year? I think he does. I honestly do. I think he does. Um, just based on the performance I saw, um, it was the first time I got to see him this year. Uh, I've got to see him a lot over his career, but this year I just thought he looked very tough, uh, very aggressive, and I think if he wrestles like he did on Saturday, he's he's definitely going to medal. Um, the question is how high, because at 120, there's a lot of a lot of big names that we're gonna we're gonna talk about throughout the state in the next couple of weeks here. So, um, but yeah, I I do think he he gets that in his fourth try, he gets that that state medal. All right, moving on to 126. Uh, the, the guy you were talking about, you, you've interviewed uh, for for our podcast here, Austin DeSanto, uh, 22 to 10 major decision over Chandler Olson. And this is, I mean, this is incredible because this is a two versus a three. This is number two in the state, Austin DeSanto versus number three, Chandler Olson. So it, it was interesting because I was talking with Dustin Hawkinsmith from Penn Live, who um, is covering the the area out there, and I said. It's incredible because the gaps. So you see Spencer Lee's number one at 126. He tech <laughs> followed Austin Asano last year. So you're talking about, wow, well, tech fall, that, that gap between one and two is huge. Okay, well, DeSano then just comes out in major decisions. Chandler Olson, who is a three-time state medalist, he beats him 22 to 10. So you're talking about the gap between one and two and then that gap between two and three. So it's really, I mean, I think that just puts into perspective how really good Spencer Lee is. I know I, everything comes back to Spencer Lee and how good he is, but um, DeSando looked great in the finals against Olsen. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, though. So you're saying there are essentially three tiers. There's the Spencer Lee tier, then there's the Austin DeSanto tier, and then it's, it's you know, not to take anything away from Chandler Olsen at three, but everybody else is, is kind of below those two tiers. Yeah, I mean, in any other lifetime, Austin DeSanto is a, is a three-time state champion, maybe a, maybe a four-time state champion, um, but at least in the last two years. So you, you look at a guy like Austin. So he beat Chandler Olsen 6-3 at the beginning of this year at the Cumber Valley kickoff. So you, you, I, I thought it would be closer than 22-10, uh, just based on their first result, but to say, I mean, so people say when you wrestle Austin once, you can figure figure him out because he he does a lot <laughs> of the same things. And well, well, guess what? Chandler Olson had a couple months to prepare for his rematch with Austin, and and DeSanto came out and beat him twenty two ten. And DeSanto or uh, Chandler Olson is is a very very good wrestler. He's a three time state medalist. Uh, he beat Jake Cherry in the the semifinals two one. Another very good wrestler. Uh, just just an incredible performance. Yeah, it definitely sounds like it. Uh, were those mostly takedowns? Uh, 22-10, obviously pretty high scoring. Was it a lot of take him, up, take him down, let him up? Or? Yeah, it was, it was definitely a lot of take him down, let him up, like his true Austin Asano fashion. But he also got a, a couple turns. And in fact, when, when we talked to him, he, he'll tell you he's, he was a little upset that he didn't get his, <laughs> his takedown to turns. But, um, you know, it, it's just, just really uh, impressive to see him go out there and, and compete against these top-tiered guys, like you said, and, and – just really dominate so and, and the interesting part about this is they're both going to be teammates they're going to be teammates for the next <laughs> five years at drexel so they're both going to drexel so um k- kind of interesting yeah absolutely uh moving on to 132 wyatt long with a 3-2 win over andrew wirt uh, was this a pretty good one yeah this was i mean it sort of was the classic cumber valley versus cd match um, you know, this a lot of, it, it was two, it was three, two, but there was a lot more things going on in that <laughs> match than just the, the three, two score. Uh, White long actually opened the match up with a nice takedown in the first 30 seconds. Um, and then sort of looked up at his coaches and smiled over it, sort of like smirked, like, yeah, I told you I was going to take him down in the first minute or something. You know, he just <laughs> sort of looked, um, and, and he, he was in control of that match throughout, um, against, uh, Andrew Wirt and, What's interesting to me is both these wrestlers have a win over KJ Fenstermacher, who's one of the top guys in the in the state. So both these guys are very accomplished wrestler uh, wrestlers, and and obviously beating a guy like KJ Fenstermacher will put you there. But I was impressed with Wyatt Long and how he came out, kept his composure um, as a senior going against the junior um, to get that three two victory. But I also was really impressed with a freshman um, TT Elijah from Lower Dolphin who. He came back after losing to Long 9 nothing in the quarterfinals, came back to place third. 
Um, I really like this kid. So he's, he's, in, he's a guy we're going to want to keep an eye on for the next couple of years. He actually has a teammate that we're going to talk about. In a, in, we could talk about him right now if you want to. But at 138 pounds, Clayton Ulrey from Lower Dolphin, he won, this, he won the regional championship at 138 pounds. So Lower Dolphin's got two freshmen back-to-back, which both were included on our uh, top incoming freshman report. Yeah, that's impressive. Clayton Ulrey uh, beating uh, Gary Clark of Garden Spot five three there at one hundred eight thirty eight pounds. Yeah, and I, I was I was just impressed with I, number one. I was impressed with Clark beating Micah Hoffman from Northern York ten three in the semis. He he threw him on his back and never really uh, looked back. He he just kept on going. Um, but Ulrey came back and, and and just you know he came out and he looked he looked tough he looked tough and it's sort of an unknown 38s that weight class especially in the state where um after sammy sasso and after a few other guys it gets wide open it really does and and it's really anybody's game so i'm not when when we talk about confidence picks those are a lot of weights where top five i'm very confident and i can say unless something crazy happens i would expect these top four to finish in the top four at 138 that's not the case. I, I think anyone within the top 15, top 20 ranked in, at 138 pounds could really end up on the podium. Wow. So you're saying just about anybody that ends up in that bracket has a pretty good chance of, or not pretty good, but at least a chance of getting on the podium. Yeah, absolutely. I do. I mean, and you look at 138 pounds, Aaron Rump, who was a state qualifier last year for Chambersburg, he actually did not pass skin checks prior to the the start of this state tournament so he he was automatically out and um you know he's he was one of the the few returning state qualifiers at this weight there's only a handful of guys here um at, at 138 pounds who actually have state state experience um you, you look at luke Kemmer from hempfield uh colin cronin from upper darby and dan moran but after those four it's really wide open. So uh, I, yeah, I think after those four, there's going to be some four guys getting on the podium that may, may be a surprise to some people. All right. So uh, some, some names to, to watch out for there. Cause it sounds like it's going to be an interesting wait when we get to Hershey. Yeah, I absolutely. I agree. And, and Michael Hoffman did come back and place third at 138 pounds. So he will make a return trip to, to Hershey um, at 148 or I'm sorry, 145 pounds, Tucker brew from big spring. He actually, this is the fourth time that they wrestled this year, and all four times now, uh, Tucker Brew has won against uh, Cal Reichert from from Cumber Valley. So, like that Cumber Valley Central Dolphin match, the Big Spring and and Cumber Valley uh, rivalry here at 145 pounds was was won by Big Springs Tucker Brew in a one nothing fashion. So these guys could wrestle ten times, and it could be maybe one nothing, two one the every time they wrestled. So yeah, pretty good one there. Yeah, I mean it was. I mean for a one nothing match, it was it, it was a good it was a good bout. Um, both these guys were state qualifiers a season ago, and um, you know, and one of the guys that surprised me, and no one outside of District Three or maybe even um, the the area would know his name is is Stefan Mayo from Muhlenberg. Muhlenberg, yes, that's that's near mm-hmm. Hamburg, uh, out that way, um, towards Reading. 20 and two coming into the the tournament and he comes out and nearly beats Tucker brew seven, six, but he wrestled him so tough. Uh, I thought, my gosh, Tucker brew may not be able to come back from this match because he, I mean, he was just, he just beat him down. Steven, Stephen Mayo comes back and wins four, four straight to wow. place third. Um, he gets two falls and then in, in the Consti semifinals, which is essentially the blood round in district three, because mm-hmm. top four go, he won seven, six in tiebreaker. Um, and, and it was just a great match. And, and I think everyone in the arena that time was watching that match. And, um, he's, he's an unknown. He's, I mean, he's, he's not, there's not a lot of Muhlenberg doesn't, you know, uh, they don't go out and wrestle the, um, you know, I don't even, I doubt they have a full lineup this year. So you're looking at a, a team like, like Muhlenberg, um, very under the radar, this Stefan Mayo is. So uh, he's he's one to to keep an eye on because he wrestled some of the best guys really tough this weekend. And you know what? That's great for the sport. I love to see those schools that you don't see all the time. I mean, yeah, it's great to have the big name schools that you know are going to have eight or ten or twelve or fourteen guys that are really good. But it's nice to see these schools that that you don't always see to get a guy to the state tournament and get some excitement going around that school and maybe get a few more kids out next year. 
Yeah, and this was actually his first trip to the regional tournament. He was 17 and 9 last year, 25 and 9 as a freshman. So, uh, you know, uh, this is sky's the limit for him and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how he goes up against some of these these tough guys in the in the state. At 152 pounds, one of one of the best matches of the finals in my opinion was the the match between uh, Braden Willis and Willem Caldiz from Cumber Valley. Now, this is uh, I actually posted a, an interview with Braden uh, on YouTube, and you can find it if you go to, to PA Power Wrestling on Facebook or Twitter. Um, you can see the video up there. But he talks about how everyone doubted him. No one, not one single person said, yeah, Braden Willis is going to come back and beat uh, Will Caldiz is because Will Caldiz has beat him every time that they've wrestled. In fact, he pinned him last week at the sectional finals. Um, so he said, I had nothing to lose going into the finals. No one was expecting me to win. Um, and, I, and I had nothing to lose. I already qualified for state tournament. Um, last year he beat him three times. So he's never, he's never won against Will Caldiz and he comes out with nothing to lose and takes him down in the first period, ends up winning three, one. That's, that's a good story. Uh, you like to see a, a kid like that persevere and just, just keep coming back. And, and it was just interesting to hear him say that, you know, like, Hey, I, I all the articles said, Will Caldiz accomplished wrestler four times state qualifier. Cause he is, he's, uh, was a three time prior to this. Um, but he's never won it. He'll probably face Braden Willis in the finals. So he said the only mention of him was he may be Will Caldiz's opponent in the finals. Mm. Um, but I, I thought he wrestled a good match. It set him up nicely for the, the state tournament. So um, we'll see how he can he can do um, in his second trip to the, the Giant Center. All right, moving on to 160. There you got a, another good match, uh, Jonah Barley with a 4-3 victory over Luke Nichter. Yeah, and this is a senior versus a freshman. And Jonah Barley, uh, he, he was a state place winner last year. He came away with a, a fifth place finish at the state tournament. Sort of took a, a, some people by surprise um, at that at that weight class and finishing there. But I, I was very impressed with the way he. I'm sorry, that was a sixth place finish. I think I said fifth. Um, but he came out and wrestled a very very tough freshman, Luke Nichter, who. Um, you know, we talked about in the top incoming freshman report, and we actually got to see him down at the Super 32 this year. But um, Nickter looked, I mean, he looked solid throughout going into the finals, and, and he looked good against Barley, but Barley was able to hold on for a 4 3 victory. Um, but Nickter's style of, he's more of a relaxed wrestler, he's not necessarily going to be in your face. Um, and he sort of waits for things to develop. He reminds me of like Le'Veon Bell. You know how Le'Veon Bell <laughs> is patient and waits for the line to open up and then hit this hole. Nictor sort of does the same thing. He, he waits. He's very, um, you know, just meticulous in that sense where he waits for the opening and then he'll, he'll go in. So um, his style can definitely uh, frustrate some people, and I think he, he's going to have some, some interesting matchups at the state tournament. That's a great analogy. I like that. What the Le'Veon Bell analogy? Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Are you just saying that, or are you? Actually, I'm not. I'm okay. not. You never believe me, Jeff. I'm giving I, you a well, compliment. You, you're normally just putting me down. You know, <laughs> always, always putting me down. Uh, and, and Barley actually, he had a tough semifinals match with Quentin Milliken from uh, Cumber Valley, who actually beat Barley in the semifinals last year, the uh, year prior. So it was a nice little avenge for him. Uh, to get that win and then to get the championship over Nickter. So Milliken did come back and finish third. So all three of those wrestlers, I think, have a shot to get on the podium. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good weight class when uh, Quentin Milliken's your third place finisher. Right. Moving up to 170 pounds, Ty Begali from Exeter Township. Here's a guy who I, I you know, I famously said that I compared him to having a Jake Woodley like season this year uh, when we were talking about the when we did the Fargo podcast or this. Well, I guess it was a summer now, um, and I said Begali. He he'd never been to a state championship before, so he's he's uh, he's been making his first trip this year. Uh, he's been a regional qualifier twice, but uh, just earned his first trip to Hershey by winning it 7-2 in the finals over Tommy O'Brien, who was a state qualifier a season ago. So Begali, I mean, yeah, he's never made the states, but he's he's a very accomplished wrestler, especially a freestyle wrestler. Um, and, and he looks sharp throughout. I mean, there's no real uh, real things that he needs to work on because I thought he looked great. Yeah, that's a, a good thing for him if he's he's kind of hitting that peak. And, yeah, anytime you can be in that Jake Woodley, uh, if you're getting those comparisons, that's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, just sort of flying on the radar. I mean, Jake. I understand what you're yeah, saying. I mean, yeah. Jake, Jake never made it to a state tournament and then won a state championship. I'm not saying Begali's going to come in and, and upset Mikey Labriola. I'm saying <laughs> he's going to go in there and he's going to compete 
at 170 pounds and his first trip may be a top four finish. That's, that's, you know, that's all I'm, I'm saying about that. Um, ben Root from Solanco comes back to finish third. Uh, he was, he had Tommy O'Brien beat and, I mean, this, this, I'm surprised he was able to bounce back from this because he, I mean, he had a trip to the state tournament wrapped up, sealed and delivered. Um, and at the last second, O'Brien was able to get a takedown and he lost five, four. So I honestly, after that match, I was like, man, I don't, I don't know if Root's going to be able to bounce back from that because he, he took, and actually he won five, three in Southern victory in the, the con C semis. So the blood round, uh, to get into the state tournament, but he did end up finishing third. That's some mental toughness to bounce back from that loss, especially in that fashion. Whenever you've got a got to go to sudden victory, and at 182 pounds, Drew Peck, uh, state place winner from a season ago, placed fourth last year at the state tournament. He comes out and gets his first sectional, or I'm sorry, uh, regional champ- championship at 182 pounds. Um, he did this over Ben Masick from Governor Mifflin. Or I'm sorry, Ben Mack, M A A C K. You would pronounce that Mack, correct? Uh, yeah, I would pronounce that as a typo maybe, but I don't know. Is it, is it actually M A A? Yeah, it's M A A C K. Yeah. Mock. 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 Okay. Ben, <laughs> ben, Ben, we apologize if we're screwing up your name. Ben from, from Governor Mifflin, who's <laughs> a very tough wrestler. Uh, he, he came out and finished second. Uh, Drew Peck was able to beat him four one. I really like Drew Peck. I, I think he's, he's one of the top wrestlers, um, the top seniors in the, in the, the state this year. Um, I think I, I definitely see him getting back onto the podium. Uh, the question is how high. Um, but I was also impressed with Emerson Wentz from Cedar Cliff, who's a senior. He lost a tough match to to Ben from Cumberland, or <laughs> Governor Mifflin. He lost to him 10-8 uh, in the quarterfinals, but bounced back and won four straight matches to finish in third place. Um, from those, those Cedar Cliff guys are tough. Yeah, it sounds like they had a pretty good showing there too. Yeah, and they actually they end up winning the the tournament, the team title. Um, they didn't even win their section. They, they lost to Cumberland <laughs> Valley in the team uh, tournament section, and, and they come back and win the team title here at the regional tournament. So uh, a very nice turnaround. I think J.J. Wilson had a big reason for that winning at 113 pounds. Um, speaking of a guy who broke the curse and finally got to a state tournament, Blake Barrick from Big Spring. This is a guy who I've had on the radar since like 1994. Um, <laughs> he, he's just been, he's been around forever. Uh, he may have been born in that year. I don't know, but, uh, <laughs> Blake Barrick, very, very accomplished junior, uh, PJW wrestler. Um, last year and a year before he had some very disappointing losses where he was upset and, and did not make it to the state tournament, but he comes back this year as a junior and he comes away with a, a championship title, at 195 pounds, Uh, And he looks sharp throughout. He looked really good. And he's finally going to get his first trip to the state tournament where I expect that he's going to make some noise. That's good to to hear. You you like those stories of that guy, like we said, you know, that just keeps persevering, uh, face some some obstacles along the way. But always a good story whenever he can can come back and and get that bid now. Now, the tidbit here is he wasn't a sectional champion. He lost in the the finals of the section tournament to Jake Couser from Northern York, who's also a junior and also a, a state qualifier. Um, from a season ago, Barrick was able to to come out and beat Ben Fromm from Cocalico because he upset Kuzer in the semifinals, beat him three um, one. So that was a pretty big uh, win for for Ben Fromm from Cocalico uh, in his own right to come out and and make a, a trip to the, the state tournament, his first trip. So we've got four juniors here that are all going to the state tournament at 195. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, Barrick is your, your champion. Hey, he's a junior. Ben Fromm from Cocalco, he's a junior. He's the runner-up. Jake Kuzer does come back and finish third. He's a junior. And then Cole Forrester from Shippensburg, he's also a junior. <laughs> so get used to those names. There. They're probably going to be there next year as well. Yeah, and, and these and really the top five here all – all really deserve a spot at the, the state tournament. Den, uh, Dennis Karras from Exeter Township, uh, really, really solid wrestler, uh, came in as a sectional champion, 30, 39 and 7. He finishes fifth. He drops a very close 3 1 sudden victory match over Jake Kuzer in his Conchie semis. This match is, uh, Karras was, was winning 1 0. Um, gets a stall call right at the end. Um, Kuzer then gets the point, so it's 1 1. And then he ends up getting taken down in Southern Victory. So very neck and neck between these four or five guys at, at 195 pounds. All right, moving on to 220. Francis Dugan with a 6-4 win over Jesse Ank of Daniel Boone. 
Yeah, and this was an impressive feat because Jesse Yank is a returning state medalist, uh, undefeated on the season. He was 33-0 and coming in uh, to the finals. And, and Francis Dugan, uh, formerly of North Allegheny, formerly of Cumberland Valley, was able to come out and, and win this championship. Um, it was his first regional title of his career. And it's crazy because he already has two PIAA state medals. <laughs> yeah, I did not realize that about him, that he hadn't won one before. Yeah, so he, he lost in the finals as a freshman, uh, lost last year at 195, or, uh, yeah, 195 pounds at, when he was at North Allegheny. And he comes out and gets a 6-4 win over a very, very tough Jesse Ank, who I, I'm, I'm a big, big fan of. And uh, he's very tall, very – he's a cousin of, of Jordan Ank, who was a, a state champion um, for Mannheim Central uh, several years back. But um, – Francis Dugan showed that he's, you know, he's 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 at 220. He's third in the state. He's up a weight class, but um, you know, he looks sharp. Does he? I mean, he looks good at 220. Is the the, the body looking good? Yeah, and, yeah. We saw him at Powerade. He was a little banged up. Do you remember him at Powerade? He had yeah, that yeah. Knee that yeah, the like, knee problem. Right. Oh my gosh! Do you remember how bruised it was? It mm-hmm. was it was it was bad. But uh, yeah, he looked good. He looked fine. He looked quick. He looked really sh- really quick actually on his feet. I remember in the first period he was in very quick. Um, he kept on hitting. He put three moves together, um, which is you know you'll hear coaches yelling that always you know put two together, put two together. He was putting three moves together, and, and that's how he was able to penetrate Ang and get the takedown. Was he just kept on going and, and um, mixed it up? So yeah, I thought he looked good, and um, it'll be interesting to see because two twenty is one of those sort of open weights as well. I mean Brian Kennerly, uh, Joey Doyle, those are the top two guys in that weight, and, and Dugan's there in the mix as well. So uh, should be interesting to see how two twenty shakes out definitely some big names there moving up to heavyweight one of the most impressive performances of all those performances i just talked about especially like austin asano uh Braden willis all those uh guys michael wolf graham may have been the most dominant wrestler of the finals the way he came out and, and beat cameron tyner from from shippensburg um he beat him 14-5 now wolf graham's a guy who's people are gonna say well well who is he He's a sophomore. He was a state qualifier last year as a freshman. He's undefeated on the season. He's 34-0 now um, in his sophomore campaign. Uh, he was a state qualifier, as I said, a year ago. And he comes out, and I, I don't know if you remember Cameron uh, Tyner, Tinner. He, he was undefeated going to the state quarterfinals last year. Mm. And um, he came out, and, and he moved up to, to 285 this year. And Wolf Graham just destroyed him on his feet. I mean, he's just so big. Wolf Graham is going to be a guy who is – he's definitely going to be in the mix for a medal. I wouldn't be surprised to see him top four uh, come come two weeks. So he's a, a bigger heavyweight. He's got some mass to him. He's got some mass to him, but he can move. Um, in, in the quarterfinals against Brady Maxwell from Kukalco, uh Maxwell had him – He, he w- it was almost like a, a cement mixer type position where he, he had him exposed to his back and then – Wolf Graham, he didn't even panic. He just rolled right through. It looked like he had done it a million times. Uh, and he was on his back. He was exposed. All he had to do was stop, and he was going to be pinned. Um, he just kept on rolling through, had no worries, ended up getting a pin in, in 350. So, uh, or I'm sorry, in a minute. So really looking at Wolf Graham, uh, untested. Central York doesn't you know, wrestle um, a lot of big tournaments, and he, he, it's tough to gauge because – he doesn't have a lot of those big name guys like Cameron Tyner, for example. Uh, his his only loss on the season was Brandon Furman. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know it's easy to say where where he sits. But uh, Wolf Graham, obviously fourteen to five over uh, Cameron Tyner, that that sets him up really nicely in his second trip. So um, and again, only a sophomore. So uh, very excited for the future for him and and seeing how he does. But um, don't be surprised to see his name high up on the podium in two weeks. Joining us now, Austin DeSano from Exeter Township, the senior who just won uh, the the District 3 South Central Regional Championship at 126 pounds. Austin, talk about the finals. Um, I I beat him by more this time, but I really wanted that tech fall at the end, but I couldn't get those back points off my shot. So I'm a little disappointed in that. But other than that, I feel like I wrestled pretty tough. Now, Austin, you you wrestled him earlier this year at the Cumberland Valley kickoff, uh, Chandler Olson, and you beat him 6-3. Yeah. What was different this time about it? Because you, you really opened him up. I feel like I got stronger, and uh, I kept getting my arm trapped a lot, and he, he was slowing me down off my movement. So this time I uh, opened up a bit and didn't get anything trapped in that tie-up. So, yeah. 
Now, it, it's interesting because you guys are pretty close, you and Chandler, right? Yeah, I don't know him too well right. yet, but uh, we're going to be probably training partners for five years, so it's pretty cool. Isn't it, isn't it cool that you, you get to wrestle someone who's going to be your teammate for the yeah. next four or five years at Drexel, and you get to wrestle him in the finals? I mean, yeah, is that yeah, pretty cool? Twice this year, yeah. It's, it's really cool. And I, I'm getting to know him through that instead of, like, personally. But uh, we got five years, so it's, it's, it's pretty cool, yeah. Now, Austin, I mean, people are – People are saying you're crazy, right, for, for going down to 126. Can you just talk about that decision to, to go down to, to the 126 from 132? I just want to get better at wrestling, and um, it, it's my personal decision. So, yeah, it, it's, it's what I wanted. You, you want to wrestle the best in the, the best competition. You want to continue I mean, think, to push yourself. There's a lot of guys at 32, but it, it was my personal decision, so, yeah. Going forward now, I, I mean, you, you cruise to this this championship. Uh, what's the mindset like? You got a week off before the state tournament. What's the mindset like going into to this week preparing? Um, basically train my butt off, basically, yeah. Get those workouts, get that conditioning in. Because I can't really work on I – can, I can work on a little bit of technique, but it's mostly speed and conditioning is what's really going to grow in these – it's two weeks, right? Yeah, in these two weeks. So at this point, like you said, it's just conditioning. And you seem like you could have wrestled another six-minute match oh, yeah. after Chandler. Uh, what's the condition? How, how, do you, how are you able to get that conditioning so high? I like to work out, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I really do have fun just working out and going outside and do, running, biking. So, yeah. All right, Austin. We appreciate the time and look forward to seeing you at States. All right. Thank you for talking to me. Yeah, I appreciate it. All right. That'll wrap it up for uh, District 3 in the uh, South Central region. You want to move on now to the uh, the Southwest Double A, Jeff? Absolutely, Eric. How, how'd it go? Uh, what a performance by District Six in this. Uh, you know, for the past couple of years, especially the Whippeal has really kind of been the the standard bearer for the Southwest region. But uh, District Six really ripped away that uh, that banner this year, and uh, sixteen finalists out of District Six just just winning matches left and right seemed like every other or every two finals was a district six rematch so great showing there and and you talked earlier about a, a team winning when they, when they hadn't won before we at uh, bishop mccourt first year program wins the southwest regional title uh edging out chestnut ridge by three points in a in a pretty exciting team race isn't that incredible that and we said this we said this at the beginning of the year we said bishop mccourt was going to be a very very good uh team or a uh, individual tournament team um you know we thought you know they they obviously had a lot of holes in their their dual team they weren't going to do they weren't going to compete on the dual level but when it comes time for the team tournament uh, or i'm sorry the individual tournament they, they were they were ones to watch and and you know it's incredible to me that a first year program comes out and gets the the win yeah, I mean, when you've got four regional champs as they did, and and four guys, I mean, they're going to be a, a a top team in in the state come to come Hershey in a week and a half uh, because they, they've got those guys that are, are going to be pushing for for titles and and at the very least medals. Uh, I would think all four of those will will certainly be in the mix for medals and and quite possibly be in the finals. Well, it started off at 106. This was another, like you said, a rematch, and you're going to get tired of hearing us say that, a rematch <laughs> with District 6. But uh, this was one that I was really looking forward to because from all accounts, the first time they met, it was an absolute war. And, oh, yeah. And, and this time, Cassidy comes out with a win. Uh, for the second week in a row, he, he beats Josh Boozle one nothing. Yeah, this one, I really thought, having seen the District 6 match, which, as you said, was just a, a battle. I mean, just both guys bleeding, uh, you know, beat up, uh, just really physical wrestling for 106-pounders. But uh, this one went completely different than I thought. Uh, I thought that if Boozle wrestled the match on his feet, he could win it because he took down Cassidy three times in the, in the final last week, and Cassidy was able to, to beat him on the mat to, to win it. But this time, Boozle kept it completely on the feet. Uh, I think he rode Cassidy for about five seconds in the second period. Everything else was spent on the feet, but he couldn't get a takedown. Cassidy wins at one nothing. Uh, didn't wasn't super active, but certainly enough that he wasn't getting called for stalling and was was able to to fight off any leg attacks by Boozle. Big performance by for Cassidy, uh, a freshman from from Bishop Court, who we had high, very high up on our, our top incoming freshman list, and I'm excited to see how he fares at the state tournament next weekend, or I'm sorry, in two weeks, looking at that 106, the top five place were all from district six. 
Yeah, it's uh, very, very strong. As we said, uh, you, you get uh, everybody coming out there. And so what a showing by District 6, not just at 106, as we but said, throughout. but as a whole. Yeah, you got Alan Simmons there. Uh, I, don't, I don't have the bracket right in front of me, but uh, Ethan, uh, Kaufman Ethan from, Kaufman from St. Joseph's. Yeah, Taylor Schunk finished fifth. I mean, Kauf, or, uh, uh, Simmons is a fourth place finisher at the district tournament. Finishes third at the region. How does that? How many? How does that work? I don't. I mean, it, it's just the dominance. And and again, you're going to get tired of us saying this that uh, over and over. Um, but really good performance by District Six all throughout, um, and sending those those guys to state tournament. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, move up to 113, and this was a, just a strange funky, weight class. Funky weight class. You, you talk about a, a guy uh, coming from from fourth in the, the district to third at uh, the region. How about you get Derek Christie, who was a fourth place finisher in the finals, and then he's going against uh, Dylan Williams, who was a district five runner up. Yeah, this was a, a just a strange weight class to me. <laughs> um, very wide open. Um, and, and talk about how how did this transpire, and how did we end up with this? Well, what you had is on Friday, uh, Derek Christie from Westmont knocks off Garrett Cornell from Everett, who was a, a regional finalist a year ago. And so that was a big upset. And then you get just complete chaos everywhere. Uh, Dylan Williams is able to pin Sebastian Kekic, the District 6 champ, and then he's able to, to go out and pin Manny Dubshack, the District 7 champ. So what a role for Dylan Williams. And I know you and I talked earlier, Jeff, uh, one of the, the Chestnut Ridge assistant coaches told us at the media day before the start of the season, said, you know, man, I'd really like to, to get Dylan Williams to, to the state tournament. Said he he's good enough to be there. He's been good enough to be there the past couple of years. Just things haven't worked out for him for whatever reason at the regional tournament and that was really one of the things that he wanted to see out of this year was dylan williams make that postseason run that he knew that he was capable of and it, it certainly looks like it, it started here williams able to score a, a takedown with i think it was about seven seconds left in the third period for a 3-1 victory over christie yeah i was i mean i was shocked when when i saw that dylan williams won it i mean not not taking anything away from dylan williams uh 26 and 11 coming into the tournament um, those 11 losses, really tough losses. Chestnut Ridge wrestles uh, King of the Mountain, Powerade. They, they wrestle some very, very tough competition. Ultimate duels, Ultimate then you duels, get the state, yeah. state tournament. So, uh, so, yeah. he's, he, so he's battle-tested, but um, you, know, you look at Sebastian Kekic, and you see he's, he's a District 6 champion, um, and he doesn't even end up on the podium here. That's how tough now, it was. I mean, now it's, and, and you sort of called that. You said outside of District 6, it's like um, you know, he has trouble. He does. He's he's Sebastian was was very good in in uh, junior high and kind of had a reputation here. Very physical, tends to intimidate guys in in this area. And then he gets outside of it a little bit, and it's a it's a little more more difficult for him for for whatever reason. But he did have a, a nice run through the district, and I think that his confidence level did come up. And I think we'll probably see better things out of him next year. ZJ Ward from Freedom was able to bounce back and place third. Uh, Manny Dovshak from Bentworth was able to come back and take, take four. So a little bit more evenly balanced here between District 6, uh, District 5, and District 7. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and, and you'll see that. I mean, District 7, while this was really a down year in terms of, of uh, top-end guys, they only had seven in the finals, which is really low yeah, for that's, them. Yeah, that's incredibly low. And and only two champions, which is really low. I think uh, Ken Wonderly from the Post Gazette had given me the stats, and they averaged something ridiculous, like eight point six champions per year over the past decade, and they only got two this year. So that tells you how uh, how low it was at the top end, but still a lot of depth there. I mean, District Six is so big, especially when compared to a district like Five, which only has ten schools in it. That uh, you know they're they're going to get theirs certainly in the in the consolations, if nothing else. Going up to 120, another one that I thought was was a, a sort of a, a, a more of an open weight class, um, and Jacob Powers from St. Joe's Catholic, and people are saying, "Well, who the heck is St. Joe's Catholic?" Um, yeah, they're they're going to be a program that you're going to want to keep an eye on because they got a couple studs here. They do, and they have a very good uh, head coach. Uh, uh, the brother of Edinburgh coach uh, Tim Flynn is the the head coach there, and he's doing a great job there. Uh, only a couple kids on the team, so they don't actually wrestle any dual meets. But these guys go out and and hit a lot of tournaments, see a lot of different kinds of competition in the state, out of the state, whatever. And yeah, you're right. These guys are, are names you're going to want to know of. And this one actually, I had pegged correctly. I had Yurik versus Powers in the final. Uh, I think I actually 
actually took Yurik to uh, to beat Powers this time. But man, Jacob Powers looks solid and and able to get the win over Yurik again in, in pretty solid fashion. And, and Yurik is a senior who was a state place winner last year, finished sixth in the state last season. So um, that just shows you where Powers is already as a sophomore. Um, and they finished one and two. Um, I, I was I was sort of impressed with Brian Dawson from Heinemann who came back to finish third. Were you sort of surprised by that? I am. You know what? Uh, Heinemann is is not too far from here. It's in District Five, but it's a tiny little charter school. They they closed the tiny little public school a few years ago, and so the the parents who who wanted their kids to still go to Heinemann came up with a, a charter school. And Logan Sheldon has taken over as the head coach there and doing a really nice job there. Couple standout performances from uh, Hope for Heinemann kids this weekend, and that's great to see. As I said, you know I love those underdog stories. Uh, a school with you. Know, know 15 or 20 kids in a grade that's able to send a couple guys to the state tournaments it's fantastic to me in the third place match he beat jet pattison from mcguffey and uh to round out your top four now 126 pounds it was business as usual (laughs) for the man the champ gavin teasdale he did. Uh, he got the crowd into a little bit of a tizzy, though, because uh, Dylan Jeffrey from Burrow came out and looked for uh, a split second like he might catch uh, Teasdale on his back. And you know the kind of reactions that draws from anyone whenever anybody comes close to, to scoring on Gavin. It's, it's yeah, I mean, you just you put your hand like out to touch him and all of a sudden, it's like, whoa, watch out. What's going to happen here? And because uh, we're just so used to Teasdale. But he comes out. Uh, gets a seven seventeen to two tech fall in in two minutes and forty five seconds in the <laughs> regional finals. So I, I see this uh, familiar trend here. Yeah, I talked to uh, to Jefferson Morgan coach Mike Lesko after it. He said, "Yeah, I think he got a little upset after that." And then, then you saw the real Gavin. Uh, so that was Gavin at his best after that. He came out and you know just Dylan Jeffrey's a pretty solid wrestler, and and you know unfortunately he keeps running into Gavin Teasdale in finals. So that's a pretty tough uh, road to hoe. Well. Well, it's if there was anything that for the Whitfield to write home about, it was 126 pounds because you had the top five finishers um, in this weight class all from the Whitfield. So definitely a better representation of the Whitfield here at 126 pounds. Would you agree? It w- it was, and this one really surprised me because Zach Clark, who has been very solid for Northern Bedford over the years, only had one loss on the season. That was the Gavin Teasdale in the Thomas finals. Uh, I had him pegged to, to get a finals rematch there and, and go up against Teasdale, and I'm just not really sure what happened for Zach Clark, but it just didn't work this weekend. Uh, he went 0-2 and, and and really surprising there. I know that was kind of the talk. I didn't get a chance to, to talk to anyone from Northern Bedford, but uh, third-party information, I know a lot of the coaches I talked to said he wasn't sick he wasn't anything it was just you know just a a bad weekend for him which is a shame because he is really a quality wrestler and to to go oh and two was was really surprising there yeah i was i was very surprised when i saw that i had to to look a couple times to make sure i was reading it correctly uh zach clark senior who was a state qualifier last year and as you said came in with only one loss and that was the gavin teasdale so i mean i i sort of had him penciled in to you know advance into the i thought he was going to beat dylan jeffrey and be in the finals there so um yeah that's i i I just i I hate to see a career end like that it is uh, i know uh we have uh, an event that we we do called the the border brawl here in johnstown and we have him he's already scheduled to to compete in that and so hopefully that'll give him you know a little bit of a chance at, at redemption it's it's not the same as winning a state title but he'll get to go out and wrestle somebody from maryland or west virginia and you know hopefully close his high school career on a solid note i was very curious about this 132 pound bracket and uh because i thought with some big name studs here uh carnell andrews tyler griffiths and and Caleb Dowling from from St. Joe's Catholic. Carnell Andrews is able to get it done. He, he was, and I'll tell you what, the, the final score in the finals, it, it's not really indicative of, of how dominant Carnell was because I really thought, I wasn't sure if he was going to get past Tyler Griffiths in the semifinal, and Carnell went out and, and just smoked him there 11-3. 11 to 3. Yeah. yeah. And and I'll tell you what, he went out in the, the final, he beat Caleb Dowling 5-1 last week, and he was really looking to improve upon that this week because Bishop McCourt was in that team race. The Chestnut Ridge had guys in the finals. He knew he needed bonus points, and he was up uh, – I, I, I think it was five to, to one in this one i think he might have let him up tried to score and ended up giving up a takedown so it was five four at the end and and dowling did come back to his credit and come close to even turning him but i mean for for the majority of the match andrews was in control of this one 
Yeah, that's a big win for him. I th- when I looked at that score for the semifinals, I thought, wow, because you, you got Griffiths who comes in thirty-one and one on the season um, from South Moreland. Re- returning state qualifier was a state medalist uh, in his career, so um, that's a big win for for Andrews. Griffiths does come back and place third uh, over Charlie Beatty uh, for Marion Center. So, what, were you were you impressed overall with the the performance here at one eighty two? 132 one, yeah one, absolutely 132. I'm, I'm jumping ahead eric I, I, I like to get i'm gonna get a little excited <laughs> yeah carnell like i said he he looks very good and and i feel kind of bad because he's just been so consistent and smooth uh coach shad benton told me they call him the silent assassin because he just he he sort of gets overlooked which is hard to believe as good as I, he is does he? but when you well i mean just just because you've got you know some bigger personalities and and you know you've got anthony walters and you've got josiah jones and you've got Caden cassidy yeah and they're all one, two in the state. And so Carnell Andrews, not that, that he's intentionally overlooked anything like that, but he's just so smooth and consistent and just keeps rolling along that he doesn't maybe get the attention that those other guys get at times. Yeah, I mean, I, I somewhat agree with that. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying we overlook him in the rankings or anything like that. I'm saying, if anything, from my perspective, I probably don't not, write about him yeah, as much as I should. Well, it's your fault. Yeah, you don't. It, it's you, always my fault. You don't give him enough ink. <laughs> you know, it's always the Anthony Waters and Josiah Jones, you know, show. What about Cornell? So I, no. I put this blame squarely on you. So, um, you know, no, no, but nobody has said that, Jeff. Only you were saying that. Now, don't I, don't get me in trouble with the McCord folks. So. Everyone believes me. Trust me. <laughs> Liam Flaherty from Everett ends up finishing fifth. So uh, pretty good showing there at 132 pounds, 138 pounds. Was this was this as close as the score would indicate? Five one. Uh, I mean, I don't know that Lawrence was, was close to scoring on Max Murin, but I was interested in this one because uh, I was going to tweet it earlier as the grizzled vet versus the the, the young stud uh, phenom, but I thought grizzled vet might be a little bit insulting to Max because he's certainly, he, he's a vet, but I mean, he's he's a, a he's fantastic not, vet. He's not, you know, gri- he, yeah, he's not grizzled. No, he's, no, he's no, no journeyman by any means. I mean, the guy's uh, uh, probably going to be a, a three-time finalist uh, and and possibly a two-time state champ, so he's, he's obviously uh, more than that. So I didn't want to insult him that way, but certainly a, a difference in experience levels. But yeah, Thane Lawrence looked awesome this weekend. I, I've been high on him for, for a long time. Uh, I, I know you have, you were, you were right at the, the preseason with the, uh, the release of the top incoming freshman. You were, you were all about Thane Lawrence and right life rightfully. So, well, yeah, I mean, he came out and just, I mean, he's, he's gotten better and better every tournament. So that first tournament, we talked about the, the opening tournament, Shar Houston, when he, he had uh, some big wins, He's just continually to, to continue to improve throughout the season, um, and, and it just really—I mean—it all culminated in this to f- him advancing into the the regional finals here. Um, well, look at the path he had: Tyler Scott, uh, nine returning nothing. state police. Yeah, nine nothing, nine nothing over Tyler Scott. Then Alex, Alex, Alex Caldwell, who who's really uh, a really solid wrestler from Ligonier Valley. He probably doesn't get as cr- much credit as he deserves at times. He looked good this weekend, but Thane Lawrence beats him ten nothing. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm very impressed. I mean, really, again, talking about just these freshmen that are untested, sky's the limits for 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 Thane Lawrence. I mean, he's six in the state. We had him last last, last week, um, but outside of, I mean, Michael Stewart from Ben was upset this this uh, at the District Four tournament. So you have Max Muir and Cole Matthews, Sammy yeah. Hepler. Could Dane Lawrence end up being top four? I don't know. I, I mean, I honestly think it's a, a good shot, a good possibility. Yeah, he, he certainly looked like he's he's in that that realm. Uh, but Max Murin gets the job done. I mean, guy, what can you say about him? Four-time regional champion now. And the, the thing I love about him is he, somebody asked him, you know, what, what does this mean? Is this more special to you than, than the others? And he said, uh, you know, not trying to be insulting, but he said, no. He said, you know, I didn't come out to be a four-time regional champ. He said, my goal is to, <laughs> my goal is to be a two-time state champ. Right. You know, this is just a step along the way. I was also impressed with the Whippeal runner-up, uh, Josh Kuslock from Shar Houston. Uh, third he was, place, third place, yeah, yeah. I, well, I'm saying he was second in the Whippeal. He was second oh, okay. from out okay. of the. He was second from out of the Whippeal uh, to runner up to Thane Lawrence, but came back and finished third um, after advancing in the semifinals. And, and as you said, he beat a tough Alex Caldwell in the the third place match, seven six. So, um, it, you know, it, again, a little bit more of a. Uh, uh, balanced representation from from the southwest region yeah a little bit there 
but again, we'll, we'll move on and get more, uh, more district six guys. in. uh, well, actually the next one is district five and, and district seven, seven Yeah. with, uh, we, we've seen this one a few times before with Justin McCoy, Chestnut Ridge and, and Cody Kamara. And same time as the first two times they met this year, Justin McCoy comes out on top a little bit tighter this time, a little more, you know, maybe a kind of a finals, a uh, little tightness, uh, only three to two McCoy, not able to put up the, the points that we've seen him do at, at other times this year, but uh, very solid win for him. I mean, the tournament, the, the, that he had to go through. He beat Corey Christie from Burrow, who's very good. Dallas Balsick of uh, of South Park, returning state place uh, uh, winner, and and then Cody Kamara, another place winner. So great tournament for Justin McCoy. I, I thought he of all people had the toughest road to um, that that finals appearance. He beat number eighteen Corey Christie, number four in the state Dallas Bolsack, and number three in the state Cody Kamara. So. Yeah, that's I would say, and it's tough to beat a guy three times. So yeah, um, and this is the third time that McCoy's uh, beat Kamari, beat him in the Powerade tournament, beat him at the state duels um, a couple weeks ago, and now beat him in the finals of regionals three two. So uh, that was a very very tough run for him to go through. I mean, because you look at the top three here, McCoy, Kamara, and, and Bolsack, those are top three guys in the state. Um, and any given time, you throw in John Pippa for Bishop McDevitt as well. Th- those are those are the top four guys. Um, so I was very impressed with McCoy to, to beat Bolsack 9-3. Bolsack does come back and place third um, to, to round it out. Yeah, solid weight there. And as you said, great run by, uh, by McCoy. He's, he's looking very good heading into the state tournament. 152 pounds. We're going to talk to him in a, in a little bit here. We're going to end the, the show with, with some, some uh, insight from, from Robert Patrick. It's no longer Robbie. Eric, I don't know. If you know he's, he's a grown up. He's, he's a man he's now. Up. He's Robert. I'm a grown man now. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I really like Robert Patrick. He's a, a, a good kid. And we got to talk to him at the media day earlier uh, this season. And, you know, he was very honest. He was like, look, I, I failed to reach my goals last year and I worked hard to get, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm working harder and, you know, obviously it's showing because my gosh, fall in 50 seconds, tech fall, 16 nothing in 251 then in the semifinals which i was most impressed with he tech followed john dale in a minute 50 um that yeah that was huge yeah and then the major decision of brock biddle in the in the final 14 6 and i'll tell you what watching it last week i actually thought biddle was going to beat robert patrick in the uh, the district six final because patrick went out and controlled the action on his feet but biddle wrote him out in the second period and then got a takedown in the third and was actually leading it with less than a minute left and the way that uh, the patrick has gotten ridden in the second period i thought man he's gonna lose this but he was able to, to gut it out get a reversal beat biddle there and he told me afterwards he said you know this this wasn't the performance that i want i've got to get better you know i've got to do more and man he came out and, and did it this weekend yeah he certainly did and uh, a, a very good performance here from district six right um derek yingling <clears throat> comes back and places third uh he, he's from from west branch a sophomore uh, dropped a 3-2 match to logan witwicky from carrington in the in the quarterfinals but um he, you know he looked he looked solid throughout and john dale ends up finishing in, in fifth there um as as well from from Moshannon Valley at 152 so overall what what do you think the the overall uh, after Patrick and Bidel what what does it look like there for for the rest of the the region Yingling is not too far off. Yingling is 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 right in that mix. I mean, Patrick and, and Biddle are pretty solid, but Yingling is is very impressive as well. See, and Garner is is just such a big strong kid. Yeah, I, w- I was surprised that, I mean, Yingling beat John Dale 3-1. I was surprised he dropped to Logan with Wiki in the, the quarters um, and to, to fall down in the concies. But, yeah, I mean, Garner as well, like you said, he, he pins with Wiki and, and then um, falls to Yingling. But Yingling, it's got to be, uh, you know, it'd be interesting to see how he uh, does in the state tournament, which is it's, it's going to be his uh, first state tournament appearance as a sophomore. Yeah, he's. I, I like him. Uh, you know, you never can tell how how a kid's going to react to getting down there and and facing the those big lights and the the big stage at Hershey. But uh, I like Yingling. Uh, I, I think he's a solid guy, and and I think he has a, a shot at being in the mix there for a medal. What about one hundred and sixty? What happened here? Wow. 
<laughs> where do you want to start? Uh, this is the, the weight class last year, last week where you had Larry Brown from Moshana Valley upsetting uh, Seth Bainey, who had been number one. And then you, you throw Morgan Dermer from uh, Chestnut Ridge into the mix. And so Dermer gets in the, the same half of the bracket as Bainey, and he's able to gut out a three, two win in the semifinals and get a rematch with uh, Brown, who I'm not sure, but I think Larry Brown, it, it's in, uh, he has some kind of contract that every match has to be a one point match with Larry Brown. Uh, Seriously. It's always close. It's, it's never always close. It, it's always going to overtime, but you know, the kid just wins. Well, clearly, yeah, he found, <laughs> finds a way. So what, what happened in this match with, with Darimer, um, that, that ended up injury defaulting. Okay. So they, they end up, uh, they're, they're tied. Uh, I, believe it was uh, it was three to three in regulation so they go to overtime and then in the overtime period uh dermer shoots in on the edge and, and, and is in trying to get in on a double and brown locks around you know like a reverse lock around the body and nothing nothing malicious nothing bad just in in order to basically avoid a, a takedown he, he throws him you know over his, his shoulder essentially and dermer goes out of bounds off the mat bangs his knee pretty badly off the floor i mean you could hear it i know i saw the ref come over and say man he hit really hard and so dermer took the injury time used uh i think just about his full allotment there opted to try to gut it out knew his team was was counting on him to to get a win there to try to win the team title so he goes back out uh finishes out the the sudden victory period goes to the ride out and he's just he's obviously not the same i mean he can't can't do anything on that knee and ends up giving up uh i I'm, i think it was a, an escape and a takedown right away really quick and then they just said you know what it's not worth it we're going to default him out try to get him healthy for the state tournament so hopefully that knee it, that when i talked to coach lazar after the the tournament he said it was is just a bone bruise they think but they want to make sure there's no hairline fracture or anything there and and just try to get him as healthy as possible for the uh for the state tournament it was kind of funny uh uh coach lazar said you know i never liked this uh this longer way layoff he said now i'm its biggest proponent you know i love it uh, this, <laughs> this layoff 10 days get get him healthy and and get him to hershey so 160 pounds was a weight class that i was very uh interested in seeing how this would all pan out because these are some of the top guys in the state. Uh, Larry Brown was second, Seth Bainey third, Morgan Darimer fifth. But then you throw in a guy like um, Hunter Jones from Greensburg Central Catholic and then Cody Jenkins, who we had seen throughout this year take some some pretty tough losses. He ends up injury defaulting against Bainey. What, what happened there? Uh, I believe it was a shoulder injury. Uh, that he had there he came down hard on it and i know he uh he got hurt there and, and didn't finish out the the tournament he took a, a medical forfeit they were going to go get him checked out i didn't get any kind of update afterwards to, to find out what it is I'll, I'll keep an ear out for that though but uh really to me the the story after the the finals here was hunter jones of greensburg central catholic who i got to admit i don't i didn't know much about coming into this weekend uh but he knocks off christian clutter the uh the Whippeal champion in the in the the second round and then ends up coming back to take fourth place what a showing out of hunter jones yeah, Hunter Jones is one of the guys under the radar. He uh, actually competed at Hemfield area uh, his first couple years. So Hunter Jones is definitely under the radar. He he gets gets uh, a, you know he's the he's a fifth place out of the Whippeal, beats the Whippeal champion Christian Clutter as you said six four to advance in the semifinals and then battles Larry Brown tough losing five four and uh, you know he earns a, a trip to Hershey. So uh, very impressive performance by Hunter Jones. He did, and I'll tell you what, I'm pretty sure he can use this week off too because Hunter Jones, just every time I saw him, he looked like he was banged up and you know really gutting it out to, to win matches and a, a couple different injuries that, uh, that I saw him uh, that were affecting him. So I'm sure he can use that week off as much as anyone. Hashtag postseason problems. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, what that's what I posted that yesterday. So there's so much going on. You know, These are postseason problems. People are banged up. Just suck it up, Jeff. <laughs> suck it up, Eric. Suck it up, Hunter. It's postseason. So 170 pounds. And this is a guy who sucks it up and, uh, you know, really uh, every time he comes out, just finds a way and guts it out and gets it done. Jacob Oliver, very scary looking human being. I'm just, you know, <laughs> I, I never want to see him in a back alley, as I said before. Oliver comes out, faces a very, very tough. We could see this again in two weeks. 
Yeah, it, it very well could be. I know uh, we had him ranked uh, one versus two, Jacob Oliver one, uh, Jared McGill two. So I was really looking forward to this one and, and seeing how it was. I had heard some things that they had scrimmaged at the beginning of the year, you know, that it was it was fairly close. But Oliver is obviously that guy that, you know, you kind of look at uh, returning state champ and you think, OK, he's he's the guy until someone else knocks him off. So let's see if McGill can. And uh, it, it was pretty interesting. It ended up five to three. But Oliver went out and got two really quick takedowns. I thought, oh man, you know, he's gonna gonna run away with this one. But McGill got back in it, uh, limited the damage, and was able to uh to get a couple of escapes, was never able to to get a takedown on Oliver. But uh in the in the at the end, uh Oliver was uh was on the bottom uh or uh, and and I, I think it was uh, I know McGill was very close to scoring. Uh, I remember his dad jumping up was was pretty excited. Not really too, but he was close to scoring. And it, it did end up being a pretty good match in the end. Uh, after it looked like Oliver was gonna gonna kind of run away with it early on. Well, these were two that are just way ahead of the field. Oliver came out, got three first period falls, two of which were under a minute to advance in the finals. McGill gets a, a fall in 22 seconds, a tech fall, and then a fall in the semifinals. So. You know, both two guys that are way ahead of the field. R.J. Hall from Shar Houston comes out and finishes third um, with a 7-1 decision uh, to, to place third. Yeah, uh, we'll move on to uh, to 182 pounds, and this one uh, the Whitfield got a little bit more of their their mojo going here at uh, at 182 as you get an all District Seven final with uh, Dominic Fundy of uh, Beth Center beating Dominic DeLuca of Derry seven uh, to two. Yeah, this had to have been a huge performance by Dom Fundy. I, I love this kid, um, I, and I'm I'm just going to continue to remind people that I completely o- over overlooked him as a freshman last year. Um, he's undefeated on the season. He came in 32 and 0, um, came out and, and got a a very tough win over uh, Christian Hutzel from Myersdale, beats him 4 three, and then um, as you said, gets a, a tough de- decision over Dominic DeLuca from Derry area in the, in the final. So, um, the whip you'll finish one, two, and three here at a 182 pounds. Yeah. Funday was really tested in that semifinal. Uh, Hutzel was leading, I believe in the third period. I think he was up three to two and Fundy got a reversal to, uh, probably about 30 seconds left if I remember correctly to pull that one out. And then, uh, really solid looking in the, uh, the final. He's just so tough to shoot on people. It, it, it's that old saying, you know, uh, I shoot, I score, you shoot, I score because you, you shoot on Dominic Fundy and odds are he's scooting around behind you for a takedown. What happened here with Wes Graham uh, from Everest? So he was the District 5 champion, had beaten uh, Christian Hutzel uh, several times this season. They battled a lot last season. Hutzel was a state place winner last year, uh, sort of surprised a lot of people. What happened to Graham? Uh, I, you know what? I didn't get to see too much of Graham, but just a, a tough road. I mean, uh, he's got, he, he lost in the, the consolations to Austin Barber of Johnstown, who's a, a pretty, was an accomplished uh, junior wrestler and has really come on uh, now in his junior season here and, uh, and was undefeated uh, coming into the tournament and, and just was able to, to knock out Graham in the, in the consolations. Yeah, Barber, I, that's a name that I've, I'm pretty familiar with, uh, having followed the PJWs pretty closely. Barber, as you said, came in undefeated 19-0, and dropped a tough match to, to Anthony Mara, 3-2, but then beats Graham, 7-5, and then narrowly gets, uh, gets defeated by Hootsville, 9-6, but then gets a tech fall for fifth uh, place. So definitely a good showing by Barber. And, um, yeah, I think the, the Southwest region is going to have a lot of I, I could see I see a few medals coming back at 182 pounds. Yeah, pretty strong here. Uh, uh, I don't think there's a huge gap here between uh, a lot of these guys. As you said, Hutzel and uh, and Graham went back and forth last year. I could see that happening here, where some guys go back and forth. You know, a good period here, a good shot there, and and things could change. Well, going up to 195 pounds, and uh, you talked about the mojo for Whippeo. Well, it was all back to. So District 6 here at 195 pounds. Not just District 6. This was all Johnstown. Uh, you get uh, Anthony Walters and X-Ray Low, uh, a rematch of, of the District 6 finals. Uh, Walters from Westmont Hilltop, which is, is right here in, in Johnstown, and Bishop McCourt, uh, also a Johnstown school. So these guys uh, know uh, know each other pretty well. And uh, and th- this was a, a not quite as, as good a match as, as the the – 
district final where it, it was really nip and tuck. Uh, Walters kind of came out here and, and got a takedown and asserted control right away. I, I was very impressed with just how dominant both of these guys were. X-Ray Lowe defeated um, Jerry Moore from Blairsville in, in the, the semifinals. Tech followed him in, in four minutes and 13 seconds. I thought, wow, okay, he's, he's for real. I mean, you know, he had a, a 6-4 win over Bryson Miller uh, from Freedom uh, in, the, in the quarterfinals and um, just turned it on in the semi. So he's got to be feeling good going into to the state tournament. I know we talked to him at the beginning of the season at the media day, and, um, you know, he was excited to get out and, and make his first trip to the state tournament and show people that he's for real. He is. Uh, for, for those of you that don't know, x Lowe, Low, he's uh, just an outstanding athlete. He's going to go play football at West Virginia uh, on scholarship there as a defensive back. Mm-hmm. And That's so right. That, that tells years, you, baby. Uh, well, we won't hold that against him. No, but, we are. Uh, we're going to put it. We're going to make. It, we're going to put it up for him. That's great. Interestingly enough, he originally committed to pit, so the the, the wound is really deep there. But good, uh, good, it makes it even better. <laughs> But but yeah. Anyway, also interesting there is he lost to Jerry Moore during the regular season. Moore beat him, and then he was the fifth seed going into the District Six tournament. Actually, was and he knocks off Moore there, gets into the finals, loses to Walters. But I tell you what, there was a, a call that could have changed that match in the in the district finals because Lowe certainly looked to me like he had a takedown. It was ruled out of bounds, changed the whole complexion of the match, which Walters wins three one. But uh, credit to, to Anthony Walters here. Like I said, he kind of made sure that wasn't really a, a, a concern here as he went out and got a couple takedowns and and controlled this one yeah um those two uh, you said from from johnstown in the backyards jerry moore does come back and finishes in third place uh so overall i i like these top two for sure uh x-ray and anthony waters uh, their chances are pretty high i think of getting medals they are. Uh, and, you know, I'm not, not quite sure. Uh, Hunter Tremaine, big, solid kid. Uh, I think he's still only a sophomore, uh, still kind of learning, but uh, pretty solid out of him. And, and Moore is, is, is a nice, uh, nice guy, too. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that either of them are ready for state medals yet, but we'll see. I mean, they're, they're hanging in there and, and getting to go, and, you know, they've got that opportunity ahead of them. You can see my, my West Virginia University education kicking in with pronunciations and uh, <laughs> using my words and putting things together and sounding things out. You, you have know, the I, best words, Jeff. You, 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 you know words. what? I mean, if you could tell someone that a guy, a, a, a graduate from West Virginia and a graduate from Pitt are partners in, in crime and business, <laughs> and they also do their own podcast, I mean, we, we could solve the world problems. We could <laughs> We could solve all kinds of issues between people if we're doing it right and not killing each other, we need a buddy movie, Jeff, you know, a road trip with, uh, with Jeff and Eric. No, that we would kill each other. Cause remember, <laughs> remember super 32. Yeah, yeah we did. We about, did really about an hour other. into super 32. I was almost on the side of the highway, uh, in West Virginia. So, but, but let's not digress Two twenty, Josiah Jones. Uh, Bishop Hey, hey Court- guess, guess what we got here, Jeff. All district, district six. six rematch. Yeah. I kind of figured that Josiah Jones. Yeah. And again, he pours it on Landon Fisher, from Huntington, um, he, he beats him in eleven five this time. So, Josiah Jones looks pretty sharp at two twenty. He did. I was really, really surprised with uh, Landon Fisher beating Bishop McCoy from Southside uh, in the semifinals. I didn't see that one coming. I thought we would get uh, a McCoy Jones final, but uh, credit to, to Landon Fisher for getting the victory there. And Jones had a, a tough match in the semifinals there with uh, Noah Weinsick of Derry. 3 2. Uh, he came out away with the win there. And then, as you said, 11 5 over Fisher in the final. So were you surprised by your, your own rankings? I mean, you had Bishop McCoy 8 and Landon Fisher 16th. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a pretty – I mean, that was a, that was a pretty good uh, match for Landon Fisher to beat Bishop McCoy. It, it was. It was. I don't think I gave Landon Fisher enough credit. Uh, good showing out of him. And it, it, was, uh, it was a little – I'm trying to remember. I know there were some strange details surrounding it. I remember McCoy – really frustrated by by what happened but right now i'm kind of drawing a blank on the exact scenario as to, to what happened there but uh you know like i said credit to landon fisher he got the job done got to the finals and he's going to get a, a pretty good spot in the, the first round of the state tournament talk about a guy who's going to have a pretty nice setup now toby cahill from berlin brothers my gosh 
when your wife Tammy and she doesn't take a whole lot of good pictures, right? <laughs> only only when it matters, like the World Championships, and it may or may not be the the movie poster of of our movie for Spencer Lee. So Tammy, I love you and I appreciate everything you do. She got a shot of Toby Cahill after the finals, and my God, what what did he do from the time that we saw him back in in October, November for Media Day to now? Because he's huge. I'm not sure that he's left the weight room since then. He he's probably in there right now. I, I wouldn't be surprised because my gosh, when I when she showed that picture, I looked not I'm not kidding, eight times to read the caption. I'm like, there's no way that's not Toby Cahill. Number one, he had like a bandage over his head, so I couldn't really see his face. Um, but uh, yeah, that he's he's huge and it clearly paid off because he gets two falls in his first two matches, beats a very solid, undefeated District 6 champion Nick Winfield from Southern Huntington. He beats him 3 nothing, and then just destroys Whipple champion Evan Sweezy. Beats him 9 nothing. Yeah, Sweezy was his only loss. Sweezy beat Cahill at the Thomas tournament. And this one, it just looked like Cahill broke him uh, scoreless after the first period. Cahill turns him in the second. And then, man, after that, he was just ruthless, just just piling up points and, and nearly pinned him. Uh, I really thought he was going to get a pin in this one. But you're right. I, and it's funny you mentioned about how big he's looking because I've seen him quite a few times throughout the season. But I saw him on Friday. I said, Toby, you are looking really thick. I mean, just the chest and the arms on him looks like, yeah, he's he's had to have been hitting the weights hard and man he looked good uh you know not not just physically but he's such an attacking heavyweight you know he's he's grown up wrestling the lighter weights and really grown into this heavyweight role gonna wrestle that in college and so he's putting on the weight but he still wrestles like a lighter guy and just attacks 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 which i love to see you know this is a guy with over 130 career wins in his in his his four years at, at berlin and honestly, I mean, Sweezy was number two in the state. So Cahill, he's got to be in the mix for a state championship. I, I'm, I don't want to jinx anybody or, you know, do anything like that. But, you know, Winfield was number four. Rickert, Cole Rickert, who's, who just recently came back, you know, um, he's a two-time state medalist. Rickert and then Danny Scheib from, from Tri-Valley. Uh, you know, you got to like Toby Cahill, the way he's wrestling. Uh, you got to like the way he, he's, he's coming into states uh, hot. And, uh, I would not be surprised if he ends up winning a championship. He's, you know, he really should have been on the podium last year. I felt, yeah, that's uh, true. he, he did a, he did a couple things that I'm sure he's probably lost a lot of sleep over. I know there was one match where he was winning. Uh, I think he was up two points with about 15 seconds left and with about 10 seconds left, let the guy up and then somehow got taken down at the buzzer, uh, to, to lose it. I mean, it was as heartbreaking a loss as you'll see in, in that situation where he was controlling the match the whole way. And as I said, I'm sure that one probably cost him a lot of sleep and maybe he's using that time, uh, not sleeping to be in the weight room, but, uh, yeah. yeah, good kid, good family. And, and I'd like to, to see Toby do well, uh, at Hershey and, and maybe do what you're saying and get that state championship. You don't want to say it because you don't want to jinx them. I understand. Uh, you're going to put it all on me. What you said, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. What you said, Jeff. Nick Winfield comes back and plays third. So overall, great showing by District 6. We are now joined by three-time uh, Southwest Regional Class AA champion Robert Patrick of Ligonier Valley. Uh, Robert, very impressive showing uh, over the weekend. Uh, welcome to the show. We want to talk to you a little bit about what you are able to do this weekend. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, Robert, we, we talked a little bit after the, the District 6 final, and you weren't too happy with how things went there. Very close match with uh, with a very game Brock Biddle of Central. And you, you seemed like you had it in you this weekend that you wanted to go out and just, just completely dominate and show that nobody in the region was really within striking distance of you. Was that kind of the mindset you took into the weekend? Yeah, it was... Um, I didn't wrestle well in my District final match, and... Um, you know, a lot of people, I think, saw that, and I just wanted to show, you know, that with the right mental mindset, uh, I can add points on the board. Um, but, yeah, I went into the weekend, and I was confident that I could, uh, I always wrestle be- uh, better the second time I wrestled, so I was confident that, um, you know, I would pick apart my match from the district final and change some things, and, and that's what I did. 
Uh, let's go back. First of all, uh, Jeff, I know was really impressed just seeing the result. He didn't get to see it in person as I did, but your semifinal match, uh, just talk about that. You were just able to, to, to go in and turn uh, a, a very solid John Dale and, and just keep turning him into the first period and get the tech. Yeah. I wrestled him in my district, uh, six semifinal match and I teched him in the second, but, um, I did one move on top, which was a tilt. And so coming into the, uh, Southwest Regional semis. I actually hit two cradles in that match, so I was kind of happy. I did more than just a tilt, but um, you know, I got the takedown and I went to work on top. And top's my strongest position, so um, I'm confident that I can score on anybody um, from the top position. So uh, yeah, he was a tough wrestler, and I just executed the match better. Now, Robert, talking about that finals match, I mean, this, you're no, you're no. Uh, rookie and and anymore you're a junior now you've now have three southwest regional titles under your belt um what going into the finals you you wanted to improve on that district six performance you said against brock Beidel. um how how were you able to go out and execute um you know i had a game plan uh i went over and watched my video from the district six finals match and my coach my assistant coach picked it apart and it was a little thing that made a difference like get my uh, two legs on one side when I finish the shot and um, riding a short tight waist instead of a deep tight waist and um, instead of letting, waiting for him to get out to put my hands on my hands on his head and cut him and always be on his head. Well, it, it seemed like it, that worked pretty well for you. You got a major decision, 14-6 in the finals to win the championship at 152 pounds. Um, you're now coming into the, the state tournament, your third state tournament. Talk about, yep. I know, I mean, we talked about this before last season. So this is, this is not something new to you. You won three, uh, your third Southwest Regional Championship. Last year at States, it didn't go the way you wanted to. Uh, you went one and two, left disappointed after finishing as a runner-up as a freshman. What's different between, well, other than the fact that you have an extra week to prepare uh, before the state tournament, what, what's different this year going in uh, to the state tournament, especially with your mindset? Well, uh, one, I have a loss to avenge this year, so um, which would be Edmund Roof. So if I see him, um, you know, there's a loss to avenge. Um, and I didn't have that last year. It was, I only lost to AAA guys last year. And um, number two is, you know, I had the uh, expectation of protect. That I was second in the state and um, uh, my freshman year. So coming in, you know, I was expected to win this year. I didn't place last year, so this year I have, you know, I'm not expected to win. So, you know, in my mindset, um, it's a lot, a lot of things changed in the past year. I don't even know what changed, but a lot has. Well, I mean, uh, Robert. Oh, sorry. Good, Jeff. Go ahead. One thing I, I, you know, I think having that, like you said, avenging that loss uh, against Edmund Ruth, having that loss, people always say, and coaches will always say, you know, it's better to take a loss in January or, uh, you know, December and get that win in March. So um, were you able to, to sit down and, and analyze that match that you had with Edmund Ruth that you did uh, with the District 6 finals against Brock Vidal? Um, no, I actually didn't, and I'm not going to until I know that, you know, I'm going to have a matchup against Ruth, because at this point in time, you don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if I'm going to have Ruth, uh, you know, my first match or my uh, second match, but to me, it, uh, you know, I'm just wrestling one match at a time going into the state tournament, and um, just stay focused on my one match, and uh, if I happen to wrestle Edmund Ruth, I'll pull out the video and watch it, and um you know, make small adjustments and uh, just be prepared to wrestle. I mean, but as of now, no, I have not watched the video. Robert, we've talked a lot over the past year uh, about the the journey from from the last state tournament to where you were. You know, uh, after winning in Las Vegas, after after a regular season win, after different points, and now we're we're finally getting here back to the state tournament. How excited are you just to be able to to kind of put that behind you and and you know show that last year was was the kind of the the outlier and the, and the blip on the radar that you know the real you was was the guy that that showed up as a, as a freshman and made it to the state finals. Oh, I'm I'm so excited to you know get to Hershey again. Um, I was so excited to compete this weekend and wrestle well, and um, it's just. Uh, 
you know, the postseason, there's something else to it. I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's always exciting. But, you know, it wasn't there last year. This excitement wasn't there. It was more nerves than anything. But, you know, I don't have nerves this year. And, you know, I'm having a lot of fun and uh, still getting better. So um, to be able to improve and get better to the last day is, you know, it's fun. And Robert, do you feel like having last year you talked about maybe having a little bit more nerves uh, than excitement and you sound very excited now. Um, do you have having this extra week? Do you like having this extra week before the state tournament or uh, do you rather get it over with? What's your feeling? Because this is the first time that the Southwest region has that that break in between for the state tournament. I like it a lot, actually, um, because one, it's going to be harder for kids who are counting weight to maintain their weight. And, you know, I don't have that problem. Uh, so it's an advantage in that way. But you get a whole other week in work. And coming out of regionals, you would have technically three days until you have to go to Hershey to you go up on a Wednesday. So now you have a whole week, a week and a half, ten days actually. Uh, so, uh, you know, the time period's a little bit extended. So, you know, that's kind of cool too. Is it good to heal up? Are you beaten up at all over the weekend, or did you uh, you get things done so quickly and uh, almost easily that uh, you're not too beat up from the weekend? No, I'm not beat up, actually. Uh, I'm going to go for a little run tonight, but, uh, no, I feel good, and uh, I feel healthy, and, um, you know, I had good breakfast this morning, so uh, I'll start watching my – eat my nutrition back where it was uh, on Monday or Tuesday, but – no, I feel, I feel excellent. Well, Robert, we, we look forward to seeing you uh, making your third trip to the, the state tournament in Hershey, and um, we won't keep you from that run. I know you probably want to get that run and get those get that excitement level up. So we appreciate you joining the, the PA Power Podcast and uh, stopping by and talking with Eric and I. Well, thanks for having me. All right. Thanks, best, Robert. Best of luck to you, and we'll see you soon, okay, Robert? Thank you. Two very good tournaments. We we would have a, about an eight hour long podcast if we went through and looked at every single region <laughs> and district. But I, I assure you, we both have things we have to take care of uh, for this big week. A lot of people, a lot of people have been asking me about the Spencer Lee movie. Um, I did release the the movie poster on uh, social media last week. Um, the movie is going to be released prior to states. So this is a movie that Eric and I did. Um, on Spencer Lee and his his trip to the World Championships, uh, where he did win his his third World Championship in freestyle. So um, a trailer is going to be coming out probably in the next couple of days here, and then um, it, it's sort of like the the state tournament week. So you know how people have their 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 celebrations and their week longs. This is going to be our week long celebration. So we're going to have a lot of fun that this the week of states. You know it is a lot of work Thursday Friday. Um, Saturday, uh, but that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're gonna we're gonna be giving a lot of we're gonna have predictions, we're gonna have the movie, we're gonna have all kinds of things coming at you. Um, so it, just stay tuned and look forward to that. That's gonna be on Amazon uh, Direct, so that's it's like Amazon Prime. Um, so you'll be able to go on it and view the. Uh, you'll be able to to rent it or buy it, the movie, and go on and see it. Um, again, just a. Just, a, I mean, obviously I'm biased, but I think it's a great inside look at Spencer Lee and his life, um, not only in wrestling, but outside of wrestling. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to it, Eric. Absolutely. Uh, had a lot of questions about it this weekend, people asking about it and very excited to see what's going on. I mean, obviously Spencer Lee, uh, the, the biggest name in, in wrestling right now in, in, in Pennsylvania, certainly, if not the nation in high school and just really a good kid and obviously an excellent wrestler. So kind of a behind the scenes look at a lot of stuff and, and what turned out to be a pretty thrilling <laughs> world championship. Yeah. And I, I can't give our film editor, uh, Andrea Wagner, any, any more credit. Cause she just did a phenomenal job of, of really showing the way that everything transpired and that, that finals match, because a lot of people do not, they still have, to this day, haven't seen the match or they're just not too familiar with it. And uh, they're going to see a different side of Spencer. So I'm really looking forward to it. So stay tuned for that. I will keep you updated. Um, I want to thank our guest, Austin Asano from Exeter, joining me uh, quickly after the, the Southwest or South Central Regional. Uh, Robert Patrick, again, thank you for coming on the show and, and speaking with us and uh, resting up for those, those, those two weeks for the state championships. Um, so, Eric, we got a lot of work to do ahead of us. 
We do, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Yes, it is. And uh, until next time, visit PA Power Wrestling for all your wrestling needs in Pennsylvania. Uh, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to give us a review on iTunes. Until next time, thanks for listening in.